Hi, this is Gene Bosler. I am in Houston, Texas, and when I, I want to show you a nice example of a lawn that's green, that's fully shaded, or almost fully shaded. Uh, the point is that you can have your cake and eat it too. You can have a healthy tree and a healthy lawn, given the right setting. Now, this does not mean that I have departed from my long uh, standing uh, position that uh, trees should have giant tree rings and that the, uh, the less square footage of root zone they have to compete with grass, the better. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Here we have this very nice nicely shaded lawn. This lawn, uh, it is early March and this customer started watering two weeks ago and I always say do a top dressing which is spread a layer top dressings, there's different kinds I guess most of them are a topsoil fine compost mix you have good organic matter, but I want to compare it to the other lawns. This lawn isn't green yet. This lawn is green. Okay. You can see the property line right there. It's almost a stark contrast to the neighbor's lawn that hasn't started turning green yet. Okay. Can you see that stark contrast? Is that coming across on the on the video? Green lawn, shaded. So my point here is that we don't have to compromise tree health, thinning them out to allow light to penetrate so that the grass will grow. Yes, there are some dead spots. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Alright. But but uh, jeopardizing tree health does not need to be the answer okay uh, we don't need to go do this to our trees I'm, I'm calling your attention to this tree that's been gutted out of the interior same species live oak fresh cuts etc uh, recently done cuts on the tree and so the, the, the point of this the, the point that I'm trying to make is you can have your green lawn and your shade too and still have a healthy tree remember when we remove live foliage from a tree we're taking away its food uh, producing production factory what's that ma'am oh I'm just standing on the sidewalk taking a taking a little video of your dark green grass so I can show the other folks at the office. Thank you, ma'am. So, this home, I, I, I call your attention to this house. I can see that it's on the market. People drive up, they don't say what nice lawn you have, they say what nice trees you have. Okay? If you're trying to get curb appeal, why would you gut out your trees? If you're trying to feature your home, why would you jeopardize the health and appearance of your trees? So this sort of light penetration doesn't really do much to improve your grass. I mean, your trees are just going to fill back in. You're setting yourself up to be nickeled and dimed to death by uh, having to prune them all the time if light penetration is your goal. And I call your attention again back to some of these lawns that, that haven't started turning green yet. And this lady just started watering. She's got a nice lawn here. But here's another thing I want to point out here. This is one of those parts of Houston where we've actually probably got some halfway decent internal percolation. Look at that. We've got some sand here. So this is a 40 or 50 year old house. And there's only a couple of inches of organic matter. Let me try to get into the sun here.
there's only a couple of inches of, of, of organic matter here and I point out there's some some roots here at the very surface but there's no roots in here we should have a mass of roots all in here live oak roots so more organic matter is needed here so there's some organic matter here but this is clay and I don't know how deep it goes but I, I you know I dare I suggest the internal percolation may be a little bit better so if you've got a heavy clay soil you might not have the magically green lawn early in March that this customer has again I make the case to increase the organic content in the soil okay so um, the moral of the story is you can have your cake and eat it too and you don't need to gut out your trees in order to have a healthy lawn so I encourage property owners to think of their trees as being a larger contributor to their property value than their lawns and when they start thinking about their weed and feed and their maintenance regime for their lawns ask themselves how is the overall longevity and vitality of my trees going to be affected not to sound like a broken record I just want to recalibrate the thinking here a little bit very nice green lawn still needs top dressing still needs some work the places where the lawn is bare I think it'd be a good idea to turn it into a big mulch bed um, I still advocate the use of a mulch bed you have places where the lawn doesn't want to grow you're you're getting signals from your trees they just as soon not have grass there either there's a lot fewer dead spots around the pine than there are around the oak so why not give the oak what it's asking for it's not to sound hokey but what's it done for us for the last 50 years but provided us with a hell of a lot of value so turn this whole area into a mulch bed or at least a vast portion of it I hear it said that trees suffer in silence I I don't know if that's really true they send us lots of signals the sprouts that they do after the interior's been that's pretty loud signal stop gutting out my interior what makes you so smart that you know better than me what I need in my canopy you think I just grew this foliage in the interior for my you know amusement maybe we should ask ourselves if that foliage is there for a reason before we do this to it yes that's a live oak it's actually got a little foliage out there at the ends but not much I'm pointing to the tree beyond the two pines easily 70 percent defoliated by recent pruning so do you think that tree is going to suffer from some stress you think it's going to be more vulnerable to diseases and root rotting pathogens and moisture extremes and pest insects and mites if 70 percent of its food production capacity has been pruned out of it do you think it's going to respond by sprouting out so again I don't I, you know I, I reject the notion that trees suffer in silence I welcome your comments info at wideworldoftrees.com also just leave a comment in the comments section or a question let us know if, if you'd like your property evaluated too thank you for your time